How can you cut back on spending without changing your lifestyle? How can a few simple phone calls save you hundreds of dollars a month? And why is extreme couponing an exhausting way to save money? We'll answer these questions and more on this, the 13th episode of the Dough Roller Podcast. Welcome to the Dough Roller Podcast, where the best thing money can buy is financial freedom. We help you make more, spend less, and invest the rest. And now your host, Rob Berger. Hey, whether you're just starting out, buried under a mountain of debt, or well on your way to financial freedom, this is the podcast to help you take your finances to the next level. Hey, welcome to day six of the 31-Day Money Challenge. Over the past few days, we've been talking about budgeting. Yesterday, we talked with Jesse Meacham from YNAB, who gave us his perspective on budgeting, including the mistakes that uh, he sees many people make. And by the way, if you haven't checked out the show notes uh, to that interview, uh, I I highly recommend it. You can find them at doughroller.net forward slash podcast 12. That's podcast followed by the number 12. I I link to a number of resources in the show notes, and one of them is uh, an entry in the YNAB forum about someone. The title of it was, you know, what to do when you've reached the end of your rope. And it's a very inspirational uh, 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 post by someone who really started from nothing and through a lot of hard work uh, is is well on their way to achieving financial freedom. So I highly recommend that if you haven't had a chance to read it. Again, that's at doughroller.net podcast, doughroller.net forward slash podcast 12. So for the next two days, I'm going to cover what I call painless ways to save money. You know, we've talked about budgeting but as important as a budget is, it's meaningless if we don't execute, right? If we don't use it to improve our our, our uh, uh, decisions about how to spend money. And so I, what I call painless ways to save money are ways that we can cut back on our expenses without making uh, dramatic changes uh, to our lifestyle. And it, it, so that's what we're going to cover over the next two days. Uh, specifically today, we're going to cover what I call the one-and-done way to save money. I think it is absolutely uh, the best way uh, to cut back on your expenses, and it's what I think everyone should do first uh, before they they start making more uh, extreme uh, lifestyle uh, decisions to to save money. Again, it's the one and done way to save money. That's what we're going to cover today. Before we get to it, though, let me give a quick uh, shout out to our our two sponsors for this thirty one day money challenge. The first is Betterment, as I've I've mentioned in past episodes. Betterment is an uh, online way uh, to invest uh, your money. It's very simple. You simply pick how much what percent you want in stocks, what percent you want in bonds, and Betterment does the rest, investing your money in a number of low-cost ETFs. Uh, They rebalance your portfolio for you, so you don't have to worry about that. They also automatically reinvest your dividends. I've used Betterment for a a, a long time now and have been very happy uh, with their service. You can find them at Betterment.com. And our second sponsor is Personal Capital. Uh, Personal Capital offers a free online tool that basically tracks all of your investments, uh, taxable and retirement. It'll show you your asset allocation. It'll suggest ways to improve your asset allocation. It'll also give you insight into the fees that you're paying, which is very important. You can check out Personal Capital at personalcapital.com. Okay, so what is the one and done approach to saving money? Well, let's take a let's take a look at uh, um, a couple of ways that uh, folks can save money, and let's compare them. So, one one that you hear a lot if you were to search the internet for ways to save money, this comes up all the time, and that's to eat out less. That's one way to save money. Uh, another way that you've probably no doubt heard about is extreme couponing. You know, that's become the new thing now. You, it's even got TV shows. Uh, about it, but this extreme couponing, which apparently I, I confess I've never I've never done that, but in talking to some folks, I know that you can save a lot of money doing that. And then the third one would be something like taking your existing credit card debt that's at a high interest rate and transferring it to um, a zero percent balance transfer credit card. So how how would we compare these three ways of saving money? Well, let's start with the first one: eating out less. So obviously, you could save a lot of money by not eating out as much course, it requires uh, you to change the way you live and your lifestyle. And for some, it's maybe a good change. I guess it's up, up to you. It's individual. It's up to you know, sort of individual preferences and how you want to live your life. But if you're going to save money by eating out less, you've obviously got to make some changes to how you live. If you compare that to extreme couponing, you know, with extreme couponing, there's some time involved, but 
it's not really a huge lifestyle change. You're, you're still buying the things that you need for you and your family. You're just getting them for less. So it's, it's probably not the same kind of lifestyle change that eating, eating out less uh, would, in, would involve. But it's still a lot of work. And really the two, eating out less and extreme couponing, share uh, one common element. And that is in order for these things to, to, to work for you, you've got to keep doing them. You can't just eat out less for a week or a month or you know, clip coupons for a month. I mean, it'll save you money while you do it, but as soon as you stop, uh, you stop saving money. So these are things that you have to keep doing, right? And with extreme couponing, again, it's a lot of work. So and I know a lot of people enjoy it. A lot of people save a lot of money with it. And if that's what you do, that's terrific. But again, if you stop uh, investing all of that time and effort into it, you stop saving money. And that gets us to the third example, transferring a credit card debt, say, 15% interest rate to a 0% interest card. Well, the first thing is, is there's no lifestyle change, right? All you're doing is transferring your debt from one credit card uh, to another. And, and this then gets to the second thing and why I call this the one and done method of saving money. Once you make the transfer from, say, a card that charges you 15% to one that charges you 0%, you save money every single month without doing a thing, as long as that 0% offer remains in effect. Uh, you don't have to keep doing it every month. You do it once and you save money, month in and month out, thus the one and done. And I think for, for really uh, those trying to cut back, to me, the first thing you ought to do is figure out how you can save money in this, through this one and done uh, uh, method. It's something that I, I look at every, every year to make sure that I've, I'm reducing the, the money that we spend this way as much as I can. And that's the focus of today's episode. And I want to walk through uh, the three steps that I use to, to sort of implement this one and done uh, strategy. And the first thing that, that I do is I write down every monthly bill that we have. Uh, the second thing I do is I ask three questions. Do I really need this expense, this service, whatever it is? If I do need it, do I need it exactly the way I have it now, or can I cut back in some way? And whatever I do need, thirdly, I ask, can I get it for less? And then once I'm done asking those three questions, I execute based on the answers. So we're going to walk through this today. And so let's go back to the first step. Write down every monthly bill you have, and I also include the amount or, if it's a loan, the interest rate. So let's think about that for a minute. First of all, uh, everyone has rent or mortgage uh, payments, so I write that down. And by the way, at this point, I'm not making any judgments as to whether I think I can save some money from this bill or eliminate it. I write everything down. I want to put everything out on, on paper or an Excel spreadsheet. So I start with rent or mortgage because for, for us, it's the largest expense, uh, our mortgage, and uh, that's probably true for a lot of people. And then I include every debt that I have. That would be credit card debts, car loans, school loans, any debt. Now, uh, there was a time when this list for us was rather long. Today, it's just the mortgage. But if you have other debts, write them all down along with the interest rate. And then I go to all of the utilities, you know, electric, gas, water, trash service. I write all of these down. Uh, of course, with something like uh, elec the electric bill, it's going to change from month to month. Our electric bill is much higher in the summer when we're running our air conditioner and lower uh, in, in the winter. But I try to get sort of a rough estimate of what we're paying on a monthly basis uh, for each of these. With something like our trash service, the amount is the same every month. But again, I write all of these down. And then I write down uh, the bills such as the internet and cable and our home phone and our cell phone. You, you may have many of these bundled into one bill. And that's great if you do write it down. But I, I, I list all of these for us and, and write down uh, the monthly, the monthly uh, cost. And then I, the, one thing that can sometimes slip by is are those sort of subscription-based services that get charged to our credit cards automatically, and maybe they're easy to forget about. Uh, but for us, uh, Netflix is, is an example of that, where we pay uh, each month for a Netflix, Netflix subscription. And uh, for a while, I had a lot of other subscriptions to things like magazines. We have an, I have an iPad, and it's, it's easy to subscribe to magazines on the, on, the, on the iPad. And in fact, I went through just the other day and looked at all those subscriptions and, and what I was paying and ended up canceling a lot of them. But whatever subscription-based services you have, write all those down. And then we don't want to forget those, month, those expenses that are not monthly, but they're, they're periodic and they come up. And insurance is a good, good example of that. So you know, write down the cost of your car insurance, uh, your life insurance, 
uh, homeowners insurance, and health insurance, particularly if you don't don't get health insurance through your employer, but if you have individual health insurance, what the cost of of that is, and you may have other monthly bills. And uh, sometimes there are a few that sneak in there that are that are easy to forget about. So I always go to our bank statement and our our credit card statement to make sure I get everything. But that's the first step. Write all of that down along with the amount you pay, and if it's a debt, the interest rate that you pay. Now, notice what we're not including. We're not including what I would call discretionary spending, things that change month to month, but that they're not in the form of a monthly bill, like your grocery shopping, you know, or the gas that you put in your car, uh, or things like that, or you know, what you spend on clothing. There are, of course, ways to save on all of these items, uh, but for this one and done method, the focus is just on. What I what I call the monthly bills, the things you get billed for every month. And so once you've got that list complete, we go to step two and we ask the three questions. And the first one is, do I really do I really need this? And this can be applied to just about everything. I mean, for most people, you're going to look at your electric bill and say, no, I need electricity, or your your natural gas bill. No, I need I need I need gas uh, to run the furnace and other things. Uh, but for for other bills, you, there may be some that you decide, you know, I really don't need this. And one example that I remember is uh, several years ago, we ended up with three cars, and one of them had a car loan. And in just looking at our budget, I just decided, you know, we don't need three cars. I don't need this expense. And so I sold I sold one of the cars. It was the one that I had driven day to day. And frankly, it, it wasn't easy to sell. I really liked that car, uh, but it just wasn't something that we needed. And uh, by getting rid of it, we saved hundreds of dollars a month just like that. And it didn't, you know, we had an extra car. So getting rid of it didn't really affect our lifestyle at all and uh, reduced our debt and reduced uh, our monthly uh, expense for that car. Uh, but go through every single uh, debt that you've listed and every single monthly bill and ask, do I really need this? And is it worth getting rid of? One of the things that we recently got rid of uh, was our cable. And we had uh, uh, DVRs, digital video recorders, that we had rented from our cable company. And by making that change, uh, we saved about $50 a month. Now, for some, you know, getting rid of cable may be a big lifestyle change. For us, it just wasn't because we're able to stream through Netflix and other services just about everything we watched. Uh, but there was another example of something that I identified we didn't need, and uh, so we got rid of it. And again, the nice thing about that is we're now going to save $50 a month every single month without doing a thing. We made that one change. Uh, I shipped the DVRs back to the cable company, and now we're saving money every month. Uh, and you know we'll do so really, I guess, forever. So uh, again, Ask yourself, do you really need that expense? Go through your list and and find out and mark what things you think you can get rid of. Now, in some cases, you may need uh, the service or, or whatever it is, but you might be able to ch- make a change to it in some way. Uh, you don't need it exactly the way you're, you, you've you got it now. And one example that comes to my mind for this is our is our internet. You know, uh, the inter- internet companies now provide, they have different levels of internet speed. And if you pay a little extra, you can get a little faster download and upload speeds. And it was something that I didn't really appreciate uh, for a while. I just I think they sign you up for one level of service automatically. But in looking at my bill, I, I noticed that there was a certain speed, and I didn't think we needed it. So I called up the, the the cable company and talked to them about it. And I just said, look, I want to slow my internet down. I don't need it to be that fast. And uh, so I wanted the internet, but I didn't need it. I didn't need the upload speeds they were offering. And so I slowed it down. I think we saved about twenty dollars. Uh, a month, and we didn't notice a thing. It didn't notice a thing when we're streaming Netflix, didn't notice anything with our computers. And so there is an example of really, again, it was just a phone call, and we saved $20 a month because you know we didn't need the internet speed uh, that they were providing. And so again, for this one, just go through your entire list and ask, do I really need exactly the level of service that, that, I'm, uh, that I'm receiving? And then the third thing, and I think this is the third question, is really where you'll spend most of your time. And that is, can I get what I need for less? Is there a way to reduce the cost of this item? And and this is where you'll spend most of your time and get the most bang for your buck. And I want to kind of go through some of these uh, typical monthly bills and give you some examples. And let's start with with debts, because this is really where you can save substantial uh, amount of money. With a mortgage, obviously, the thing to do if you can and if it makes sense is to refinance. Now, that, you know, whether you can refinance is going to depend in part on you know, what kind of interest rate you can get, whether you can lower your rate or not. Uh, 
as well as other factors like uh, you know the amount of your mortgage, how much time you have left on the mortgage, your 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 credit score. So this may or may not be an option for you, but if it is, uh, it can be a, a fantastic way to save money. We refinanced our mortgage twice in 2012 because the interest rates were dropping so quickly. And the result was, I think, when it was all said and done between two refinances, we saved about $700 a month, which is significant. Now, you know, we, we deduct our interest expense, so our, our after-tax savings will be a little less than $700, but it was still a, a very substantial uh, savings. And I'll also say here that if you rent instead of, of, of owning, you know, you, there can be ways to save on your rent. You may be able to convince your landlord to reduce your rent or at least not increase it uh, if, you, if you go either for a longer-term lease or stay in the apartment uh, uh, or home, wherever, whatever you're renting, uh, uh, for another, say, year. One of the things that surprises me as a landlord is that tenants never negotiate with us. You know, we, we, when, we, when we advertise a property for rent, and I've been doing this now for, I guess, nine years, we have not one time had a, t- a tenant or prospective tenant try to negotiate the rent. They either accept what we're offering or they, they look somewhere else. Uh, but you know, one of the things to keep in mind is that landlords hate turnover. They hate vacancy. It's a pain. They've got to advertise uh, the property. Uh, they could go a month or more without a, a tenant. Uh, oftentimes, they have to spend money cleaning up the, the property. So they hate they hate vacancies. They hate turnover, and you can use that to your advantage sometimes uh, to perhaps negotiate a better rent. For all of your other debt. The question is going to be, can you refinance the debt at a lower rate? With credit cards, I alluded to this earlier, it's easy to do if you can transfer to a a 0% interest credit card. When my wife and I were climbing out of credit card debt, that's exactly what we did. We transferred all of our credit card debt and even some of our home equity line of credit to uh, 0% interest credit cards. And when the 0% uh, offer ran out, we just transferred to new cards. Today, uh, the longest 0% offer, at least that I'm aware of, is about 18 months, so that's you know, it's pretty significant. You do pay a transfer fee typically of about 3%, but that's uh, going to be far lower than the interest rate you're paying on a credit card. So that's an easy way to lower uh, your monthly expenses uh, significantly. And in the show notes, I'll, I'll include a link to a page that lists what I think are some of the best uh, balance transfer cards available today. Uh, but you can also refinance just about any debt. You may be able to refinance your car loan, uh, and there probably the thing to do is just to go to your bank and see what the options are. And it may seem like it's not all that helpful. Car loans are typically uh, much shorter, so usually three to five years, maybe six or seven years at the outside. Uh, but if you can lower the interest rate enough, it's easy to save a, a significant amount of money on a car loan. And so, again, the thing to do here is to look at all of your debt and ask, can I lower the interest rate? And this is where I think folks can save a substantial amount of money. And once you refinance the loan, whether it's a mortgage, credit card, uh, debt, car loan, school loan, whatever, uh, you then are saving money month in and month out with no additional uh, effort. Uh, let me now move on to insurance. You know, insurance is sort of one of those necessary evils. We have to have it, but it's an expense that you know you'd much prefer not to have to to, to pay for. Uh, but there are ways to save money on on, on insurance, and the, the, there's a couple that I want to mention today. One is I always check and compare prices every year, whether it's for car insurance, life insurance, whatever. Uh, I want to see if I can get a better rate somewhere else, and it's you know it's easy to do online, and I'll I'll include links to uh, pages on on Door Roller where you can easily compare all of those with car, life, health, and homeowners insurance um, uh, very easily. Um, and that, but that's you know can be an easy way uh, to save save money. The other thing I do is constantly monitor my deductibles. I prefer uh, to keep my deductibles as high as as they will allow. Now, you know this is a very individualized decision. You have to understand. You know, think consider your own finances and what you think you can afford. But for example, on our car insurance, we have a five hundred dollar deductible, which is the highest we're allowed where we live. On our homeowners insurance, I have a five thousand dollar deductible, which again is the highest that. That we're allowed to have, and that means that I'm going to I'm effectively self-insured on my homeowners for up to five thousand dollars. But uh, you know the the risk of of that kind of claim is is pretty minimal, and you know with a with a, an emergency fund available, we could handle that. It wouldn't be fun, but we could handle it, and it saves us uh, hundreds of dollars a year. And over the life of uh, of say a mortgage and your time in a home, it's going to save you thousands. 
And so, again, you've got to make uh, sort of the choice as to what's best for you and your family and what you think you can afford. But my view is that you know insurance should be limited to what you absolutely have to have and nothing more. And, and so raising deductibles on things like car insurance and homeowner's insurance can be an easy way uh, to save money. The other thing that, that I do is keep, a, keep track of our credit score, which may seem like an odd thing to think about in terms of insurance. But particularly with car insurance, they do look at your credit score when they set premiums. So if you have a good credit score, you will pay less than someone who perhaps has a poor credit score. And uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll be talking about credit scores a little bit later uh, this month uh, in more detail, but it's something to keep in mind. If you can improve your credit score, you can likely get a reduction in your uh, car insurance. Uh, with regard to internet and cable and home phone and all of that, uh, there are a number of different ways to save money. For, for, for one, some people have just gotten rid of the home phone and just have cell phones. We've not, we've not made that move yet. I suspect the day will come when we do. Uh, but I know in our case, if we did get rid of our home phone, it would save us $30 uh, a month. And so that's one option. And then it's just a matter of calling the cable company. You know, there's d- different bundles that you can get that save you money. We, um, as I mentioned, we got rid of cable uh, just uh, the last week. We got rid of the DVRs and the cable company in, in discussing our next package. They said, well, you know, you can have internet and home phone, and that'll cost you $85 for a two year contract. But if you add, basic cable without the DVRs, we can actually give it to you for $80 with no contract. Now, I have no idea why that is. Uh, So we took the cable just to keep the price a little lower, but you can get those deals with just a phone call. So, um, you know, figure out what you need and, and then figure out the best price you can get. You know, another option is to reduce the type of cable you have. I mean, some folks have 500 channels that they rarely watch. And we we went down to basic cable years ago and saved a substantial amount of money. So, you know, today, internet cable and cell phone costs a fortune. And so if you can figure out ways uh, to save money there, it's the kind of thing, again, it's one and done. You make the change and then you save money every single month. The last example I'll, I'll list here deals with utilities, and this can be a little uh, trickier. Something with trash service, I found, just call them. You know, gar- trash service is a very competitive market. The, they have virtually no additional cost for each customer they add, and so they they'll they'll go a long way to keep your business. And so, a simple phone call can end up reducing your 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 monthly costs there. But with things like electric and and, and natural gas, you know, part of it's going to simply be changes you make within your home. I know in our case. We just got a new furnace, and we spent a little extra to get a 98% efficient furnace, which cost us a little more, but in the long run, it's going to save us money on our gas bill. And we did the same thing with the air conditioner that we had replaced. We got a high-efficiency air conditioner, which will actually save us a significant amount of money uh, on, a month to, on a monthly basis, particularly, obviously, of course, in the summer. Uh, so you can make those changes. You can make less dramatic changes with uh, things like you know, insulation, the type of light bulbs that you use. I'll include links to some articles about ways you can save money on your utilities in the show notes uh, that you can check out. Uh, but this can make a significant impact on your electric and gas bill each month. And again, you make these changes to your home once and then you save money every single month. So that gives you some some ideas. I can tell you that in the in the weekly newsletter that I send out, we've talked about all, all of these issues from time to time. And I get emails from readers who share with me the ways that they save money. And it's really amazing the creativity uh, that people bring to this. And you know, each c- circumstance is different. You may have other ways that you can save money. But, but in, in, the common element, again, is that these are changes that are made once and then the folks save money each and, every month, each and every month without lifting a finger. And so this is where I would start. If you're having trouble making ends meet, or you just want to reduce the amount of your expenses so you can invest more and save more, I would start with this one-and-done strategy. And so once you've, you're done asking those three questions, it's just a matter of executing. It's a matter of, of getting it done. It usually involves a number of phone calls, uh, uh, depending on how you think you can save money. But once you do that, the savings can be significant. I mean, again, I've had folks email me that they've saved hundreds of dollars a month, and particularly those that are able to refinance debt, I've had some folks that are able to save a thousand or more uh, a month. And again, once they do, it's 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 savings that they enjoy each and every month. So the starting point with uh, cutting back is the one and done method of saving money. 
I hope you found this helpful. As I said, I will include uh, a ton of links in the show notes to articles both on doughroller.net as well as other sites that give you, uh, will sp- I think, spark some creativity and give you ideas as to how uh, you can make this a reality for, for you and your family and for your uh, monthly budget. Tomorrow, uh, what we're going to cover are what I call 20 painless ways to save money. We're going to kind of take this to the next level and look at other ways beyond just the one and done uh, method where you can save uh, money without making dramatic changes uh, to uh, to your lifestyle. So that's what we're going to cover uh, tomorrow. Uh, as always, you can get the show notes uh, to this episode at doughroller.net forward slash podcast 13. Again, I'll include a, a number of links to resources that I think you'll find very helpful. If you'd like to leave a voicemail for me with a question or comment, you can do that at speakpipe.com forward slash doughroller. You can also email me at dr at doughroller.net. I read every email and I respond to every email. You can subscribe to this podcast. Just go to doughroller.net forward slash iTunes. That will redirect you to the iTunes page where this podcast resides. You can subscribe there and you can also leave a review. And you can sign up for our weekly newsletter. Just go to doughroller.net forward slash newsletter. It's free. It's easy to sign up. We pack our newsletters with resources and tips to help you make the most of your money. They go out every Saturday at 8 p.m. So until tomorrow, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.